Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. In this episode of Rust Electricity 101, the component guide, we're going to update with a new and improved rechargeable battery guide. If you've been playing Rust for a while and enjoying the last year of initial Rust Electricity, you'll have suffered through the old batteries and now the new batteries are much nicer and make many things in Rust Electricity easier to use. So let's cover it. First of all, there are three types of rechargeable batteries. Previously there were two. If you're new to Rust, you don't know that, but we used to have small and large. Now we also have a medium rechargeable battery. Here's what they are. The small rechargeable battery looks a lot like a car battery. It has a maximum output of 10 Rust Watts, as we call them now. I used to call them power units. They have a name, Rust Watts. It can output a maximum output of 10 rust watts. It has a maximum capacity of 150 rust watts, which means at its full output, it will last you 15 minutes. They are found in common uh, loot and can be crafted for just 10 high quality metal. The medium battery looks like a couple of barrels on a pallet. It has a little bit better capacity and output. It has 50 units maximum output of rust watts, but it has a capacity of 9,000 rust watt minutes. That gives you 180 minutes or three hours of runtime at its full maximum output of 50 units. These are a little less common in the common loot crates. Um, they're more common in military elite and locked crates, and they are craftable for 25 high quality metal. They are also purchasable at the Bandit Camp for just 75 scrap. So if you're having a hard time finding batteries, you could always go buy a medium battery from the Bandit Camp now. And finally, our good old friend, the large battery. The large battery has a maximum output of 100 rust watts. It has a capacity of 24,000 rust watt minutes, which means that its full output of 100, it will last 240 minutes or four hours at full load. Uh, like the medium battery, also rare in common loot, but it is more frequently found in military elite or locked crates. And as you can see here, it is craftable with 50 high quality metal. None of these batteries are a default blueprint. So if you need a battery right away, go buy a medium at the bandit camp, research it, blueprint it, and then at least you have something you can craft. Small batteries, usually not that hard to find. Hint, hint, uh, go diving offshore. They seem to be there a lot more than other places. All right. While all the batteries do have differing size and capacity, they do function the same way. So I'm going to go through some of the key concepts for all of you who are new to batteries or new to the new version of the batteries so that you understand some of the uh, critical concepts of these batteries. First of all, uh, as soon as you connect a load to a battery, it will start discharging. Uh, what does that mean? That means as soon as I take this output and plug it into anything that consumes power, you're going to see that it'll show an active load. In this case, active usage is 10 units, and you will see the capacity and the time remaining starts dropping right away. There are a couple exceptions to this. Uh, one of the exceptions is the switch, the manual switch. The manual switch, if it is off, does not constitute a load on the battery. You can see it's off, active use, zero. What it will do when I turn it on is consume one unit for itself, one unit for the counter, two units for the lamp that's connected for a total of four. So if we go back and look now, active usage four, and you can see the runtime starts dropping. Uh, it does have more than 15 minutes runtime because we're at less than half load. So remember, this is like a real world battery now. If you're new to Rust and you say, what in the world are you talking about, Thumper? The old Rust batteries always ran at full output and you couldn't charge them. They were stupid, unrealistic, a huge pain in the ass and confusing. Need I say more? The other component that will not constitute a load on the battery is the blocker. It will itself consume one unit. However, if you do put power into the block pass-through on the side, let me just take it from this battery real quick and show that, it is now in blocked state. Since it is in blocked state, it does not consume power. 
it will use zero units because it is off. So a manual switch and a blocker in the blocked state will not consume power from a battery. Uh, pretty much everything else does. Um, there have been some exceptions uh, that I'm still trying to confirm. But in general, once you connect the load, it's going to start using the battery. Now, that used to be a big problem. We had to construct all of these crazy UPS units with blockers and switches and other stuff because you couldn't charge the batteries faster than they discharged. Now, that is not true. Now, they only discharge at the rate of the load which is connected. So I'm going to take this uh, input off real quick here. And so, like I showed with the lamp, if I connect this to the switch, turn the switch on, it's now going to consume four units. Four rust watts per minute means that number of 875 you're looking at right there is only going to drop four per minute. That's three and a half hours of runtime. That's a long runtime. It also means we can charge this battery as long as we're putting in more than it's taking out, and it has to be 20% uh, more than it's taking out, we'll get to that in a minute, then you can charge the battery while it's in use. Didn't used to be able to do that, so if you're new to Rust or if you're just coming back to Rust and you were frustrated by the batteries always dying and not being able to charge them, that is no longer a problem. Uh, before I leave the topic of load, I want to point out two exceptions um, because some of you will find this frustrating when you're making circuits and things start acting wonky. Normally, you'd expect this battery to have 50 units of power output, so you'd hook it up to these 10 components you see on the wall, and you would expect that it would consume 10 units of power from the battery, and it would take 10 units of power off the circuit. Memory cells are one of the exceptions. Memory cells do not consume a unit of power from the circuit. Don't know why. It's always been like that. It's kind of handy in that you can use them as like uh, extension cable couplers <laughs> if you want to make co cables longer because they don't actually consume power off the circuit. Um, how do I know that? Well, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. That's, uh, we lost four units of power, one for each of the displays, but none of these. If these were all consuming power, this would be 41, not 46. So if you look at the battery, it says its active load is 10, which means memory cells do consume power from the battery, don't consume a unit of power from the circuit. That's one of those weird exceptions, okay? Normally, if you put 10 units of power on here, you'd expect it to use 10 from the circuit, 10 from the battery. Memory cells do not use power from the circuit. They do use power from the battery. Branches, interestingly enough, are actually kind of the opposite. So let's take a look at the output here. If I plug into the branches, um, if you don't know how branches work, please go watch my component guide on that. I'll wait. Okay, and you're back. Um, the branches consume a default of three units of power from the circuit. One for themselves, and one for the minimum configured output of two units. You can't configure the branch for less than two units, so these will always consume three from the circuit. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 100 units, minus 24, just what you'd expect. 24 units off the circuit, leave 76. Does it consume 24 from the battery? No, of course it doesn't. <laughs> it consumes 17. What are those 17? It's the actual load. It's the two on each of these branches. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And finally, this component on the end, the counter actually constitutes a one unit load on the battery. So that's 17, 16 plus one, 17. So ironically, the branches do consume from the circuit but they do not consume a unit for themselves off of the battery. Only their load consumes off of the battery. So that means memory cells do not consume from the circuit. They do consume from the battery. Branches are the opposite. They consume from the circuit. They do not consume from the battery. I know that's confusing. Sorry, it's worth mentioning though, because when you start planning a nice long circuit off this battery for all your turrets, and you start wondering, well, how come uh, my turrets are only using, you know, 60 off of this, but my circuit's using 70 whatever, and I have no power left? It's because of this unusual behavior on the branch. Will they fix that in the future? Eh, probably not. It's rust. Who cares? Plus, it's kind of to your advantage in some cases here on the battery anyway. So get over it. All right. 
Now that we're done with the load exceptions, let's move on to the runtime. Runtime is calculated automatically for you. Um, it does work like a real world battery now. It's worth pointing out again if you're used to the old batteries, but instead of it just discharging it full, in this case, 10 rust watt minutes divided into 863 will give you an hour and 26 minutes. It does the math for you right here. You don't have to figure it out. The more load you add, the faster the battery is going to discharge, just like the real world. Go figure. Something in Rust is almost like the real world. Amazing. Now, the important part about these changes is that now you can charge batteries. Um, not just when they're below their maximum load, you can actually charge them when they are running at their full load. So even when this battery is using its full 50 units output, you can still charge this battery. Why is that? You say no. If you've been playing Rust for a while, you know that the 80% efficiency means that if you are putting into the small battery a full 10 units in, it would only add 8 units to the battery. That means it always went dead. It was annoying as crap. They raised the limit. The input limit is now four times the output limit. That means on a small battery, it can put out a maximum of 10. It can input a maximum of 40. You can put more into it. It will consume more, but it will only use 40 to charge the battery. So if you put more than 40 units into a small battery, it is a waste. It will be lost. Don't bother. Same thing on the medium battery, 50 out, Four times the input is 200. You can put 200 units of power into this battery to speed up the uh, rate at which it charges. Beyond 200 is a waste. It will not use it. It will consume it. It will not use it to charge the battery. It is a waste. On the large battery, 100 unit output, 400 unit input. Again, anything over 400 on the input will be a waste. It will not use it for charging, so don't bother to put more than 400 in. doesn't hurt it, but it's not going to help you at all. Where does the 80% efficiency come in, Thumper, you ask? Well, not only does it say it right here, the way it works is if you were putting 100 units into this battery, it will add 80 units to the capacity so that number you see right there 1393 that's going to go up by 80 units per minute if you're putting 100 units onto the input handle so it's 80 percent of what you're putting in will get added to the capacity because you can put four times the output into the battery that means you can put 400 units into this battery it will charge at 320 additional units to the capacity of the battery every minute so if you put 400 or more you will add 320 rust watt minutes to this battery every minute so you can charge it more than three times faster its maximum output now remember if you're running it like i am here and you're only consuming 17 units of power if you're putting in that full 320 units of power it's actually adding 303. It's using 17, it's adding 320 for a net gain of 303 units. If you are running at its full output at 100, if you're running a 100 unit load on this, you'd be putting 100 out and a 320 in maximum means it still adds 220 units of capacity to the battery every minute. That's great, it means you can super fast charge this thing during the day at more than two times its capacity or more than two times its output if you don't have any load you can charge it at more than three times its output either way you can charge batteries while they're discharging that's great because now we don't have to build complicated ups circuits it also means we can root combine batteries we couldn't do that before because if you put a root combiner after batteries they would always die because we couldn't charge them now we can. So now you can root combine a large and a medium together so that you have 150 units of output for use on your circuit. And you can charge both batteries at the same time with other power sources. As long as it's more than they're putting out, 20% more than they're putting out, you're all good. I am not going to get into the details of that anymore because there's some bugs and quirks. Uh, one final point that you should know that also changed, and my cave basers, please celebrate, hurrah, 
Look at this. Current capacity, 816. What does a medium battery start with? 100. What happens every time you pick up a battery and put it down? It goes back to its 100. Not anymore. Now, if we pick up this battery and I put it back down again, oops, still has its 814 units it had when I picked it up. Batteries don't lose charge when you pick them up anymore. Hallelujah. Why is this important to cave basers? If you live in a cave, you know how much of a pain in the butt it is to have to charge batteries, because really the only thing you could use was the new small generator that came out recently. Before that, power in caves was pretty much worthless. Now that you can pick up a battery and have it keep its charge, you can charge batteries on the surface bases and bring them down to your cave for use while you're offline or overnight or whatever you need to do. A lot easier to work with the batteries now in cave bases. Not that you wouldn't want to use generators and have them fixed down there, but you don't have to use a generator to charge a battery in a cave anymore. You can charge it on the surface and bring it on down. Uh, now, uh, before I finish, I will throw out a few words of caution. Uh, yes, you can wire batteries together with root combiners. Yes, you can wire batteries in series, one battery to the next. This is quirky as all hell. Um, lots of weird things happen. You have to, if you're going to do it like this, one battery to the next, you're going to need to do some math to keep from running your batteries dead. Um, if you root combine them together, all kinds of stupid stuff happens and they consume power at an incredibly inefficient rate that mathematically makes no sense at all so i would strongly suggest against doing um root combining of batteries to charge other batteries i would also tend to stay away from putting batteries in series if you don't have a good reason to extend your life on most servers Daytime is 45 minutes, nighttime is 15 minutes. Even the small battery fully charged at full load can last 15 minutes. It's not gonna be very often that you need batteries that run longer than their capacity. Um, if you do, you can run them in series. Uh, you might wanna calculate out a decreasing load on the battery to keep it from discharging the last battery in the series because that'll cause your power to flicker on and off or your turrets to flicker on and off. This is a nightmare. Um, I have other videos where I will talk about this more, since this is the basic component guide on the batteries, I won't get into more detail here, but do use caution when hooking batteries together in series or root combining them. It can get a little funky. Test, test, test before you leave your base to die with no power on your turrets. But that covers all the basics of the small, medium, and large batteries, their capacities, their run times, some quirky exceptions of the components like the memory cell and the branch. And hopefully that's enough to get you started with the rechargeable batteries.